In this lesson, we'll position the anchor points for the torso and troubleshoot some problems that I didn't foresee happening when designing the character in Photoshop. I think the next step is to deal with these torsos, or at least these this level of the torso. I'm just going to reposition the anchor points. Uh, it's a little bit harder to position these without all the other pieces we're going to need, but I'll just put them in for now, basically around this area here. And the main focus is this rotational point here, which is going to work a whole lot better for the side puppet than it will work for the three-quarter puppet. But regardless, one of the big problems with this style of cutout is that you have this major shift happening with these buttons, and it's probably better to avoid buttons altogether. One of the better, a better way to deal with this would be actually to rotate from the button itself and allow this to collapse along the back. The only thing is, is it really extends the spine. So you try to find a happy medium in there. So this puppet is not I for this type of a setup. But I, the only thing I want to avoid is that if I bends back, that that button gets revealed and reveals a double. You know, that's that buys you a little bit of flexibility. And that's all we really need for this. And the same goes for this one. For this one, what in an ideal situation, you'd probably set up multiple pieces. Uh, in one project I did that was called Aboriginality, I had a character with, that was all segmented like this. I couldn't do buttons. I couldn't do a lot of things. And even this, this row of fabric here where it overlaps, it breaks the illusion because this line comes out of nowhere. So you really want to avoid stuff like that for a fully segmented puppet. But because this puppet, we're also doing a puppet tool version. I'm not worrying about it. And again, it's also meant to be a paper cutout design. So it's really okay that it's not the most perfect stylized puppet. So there's, there's a little bit of a reason for this. You can kind of pull it off and get away with it. I want to parent the the actual torso one to the torso two and we're going the opposite way of the legs and arms and the reason for this is is on the arms we want the upper arm to drive the lower arm on this one if this torso were an arm this would be the shoulder so I want the point of pivot to actually be at the bottom of the torso and eventually that will be linked to the actual hips because if you bend down to pick something up you bend down from your hips and then you bend your back further like that so that's where you get your bend from. So we'll just double check that whole theory here. Let's parent the, let's, let's go R. There we go. Let's parent torso one to torso two. That's torso two there. So let's just rotate down and then rotate down. You can see how it's going to work. Now this is a small bit of a problem because if I want this puppet to bend a little bit more than this, that's not gonna work. So let's reposition this anchor point more to the middle. There we go. The only problem with that is if it bends the other way, we reveal that other button quite soon. However, this puppet doesn't isn't going to bend much further than that. So I think we can get away with it. It is it is not the best. This is not the best way to solve this. Let's try actually a little lower and see if we can get something a little bit no. That reveals that huge chunk. However, Let's rotate this a couple more times. We want to rotate this a bit and get a get a, get the hang of what's going on here. It's probably better just up in the middle. Let's see what happens. Again, the only problem is we reveal that button, but that's you know what? It still looks a whole lot better. And what I could do is we could remove that button on the bottom layer there. So we'll just do that. Get rid of that. Let's rotate this to zero. To zero. There we go. Oh, let's get this toggle away. Okay, so that's back to zero. Now what I want to do is I'm going to go into this bottom layer here, and we're just going to get rid of this button. We can do this. We could do this in Photoshop, or we can do it in After Effects. Make sure you're at frame zero. I'm just going to use the stamp tool, and I'm going to size my brush up. I'm just holding down Control and dragging to the right and left, and that will size my brush. And then I'm going to Alt uh, click just somewhere in the in the the object and thankfully I don't have a lot of shading going on so it's gonna be a lot easier to hide what's going on let's shrink that brush and then I'll just paint this in there we go and now hopefully that should follow this layer when I rotate it and we should be less one button perfect so now we can get away with a much more extreme rotation on that body part there and we didn't have to go back in Photoshop to fix it Okay, so that's the torso. I guess what we could do since we're here is actually 
parent the shoulders, uh, the actual upper arms to the torso. Um, I mean, the other thing that we might do is we might actually add a null object to actually drive the shoulders forward and backwards and shrug them a little bit. But again, I'm not 100% sure how this, how detailed and articulated this cutout puppet's going to be. So for now, let's just parent the, the arms to torso one. So the sidearm left is going to parent to torso one. Uh, and then the sidearm, we want the sidearm right, zero one, to also... Oh, sorry. Why is it zero two? See, this is a little messed up. Our naming convention got a little screwed up. So arm one here is this guy, which is a misname. Arm two is this guy. This guy should be arm one. So we can rename it in here. Let's press enter. Oh, let's rename this, this layer here. And this will be arm two. There we go. Okay, so let's do that again. So sidearm right one is going to parent to side torso one because this is torso one. Okay, so let's grab sidearm left one. There it is right there. And we'll parent it to side torso one. Oh, it's already there. Great, so they're both parented. Perfect. Let's move to this one. And we'll do the same thing because when we rotate this, we want these arms to come with it. So let's go I'm just going to press R on that so I can find it. And we'll parent that to three quarters torso one. And then the back arm, which is, should be the left, which will be an orange. Side arm left two. Left one. Oh, that's side arm. Sorry. Three quarter arm right one, which is in the right place. Let's parent that to three quarter torso one. So now when I rotate this torso, the two arms come with it. And then I can just do this. And that works out just fine. I'm thinking before we get into the next phase, what I want to do is actually clean up uh, this torso piece, this top piece, because what's going to happen is when we actually put the neck in, I need the neck to sit underneath this piece. I never split this up in Photoshop. For this particular version, let's, let's just split this torso up. So I'm going to press Control-Shift-C, and that will create a new composition, and I'm going to name this new torso uh, 01, 3Q torso 01, comp but what i'm also going to name it is three three quarter i'm going to i'm going to give it the prefix of seq for segmented so segmented three quarter torso zero one comp i'm going to leave all the attributes in there because there's nothing going on and if i if i keep this selection what will happen is the new composition will be the exact same size as this piece if i click on this the new composition will be the same size as the entire scene composition so it makes the object a little harder to work with and then I have to sh shrink everything down. So for our purposes, leaving all the attributes here in this composition will, will work just fine. So I'm going to press OK. So what's going to happen is this has essentially become a little comp, a little nested composition. And I can go in here and now I can actually work with this object. So what I'm going to do is actually create two uh, two separate compositions. I'm going to create a front composition and a back composition. Let's just get rid of that for now. Move that over. So right now I have the one. So let's actually go have a look at this. This is going to be called sequence torso zero one comp. And we're going to call this zero one front, front comp. And then we're going to do a back comp. So let's just focus on the front for now. But actually let's duplicate this and we'll call this one back. What I'm going to do here is just mask this off and get rid of this back section so that I can stick the neck in there. And it's a pretty easy mask because the character is designed to be split up. So what I'll do is I'm just going to run this. I'm going to start here in the most exciting region. Kind of stick to the black. I don't worry about being too perfect. If I want to, I can really come in there and focus on this. Uh, right now it's at half res, so if I really wanted to be precise about this, I should put the resolution to full. And I'm going to give myself a little bit of overlap there. There we go. And then here I can just go around the actual object like this. And then we're just going to hug along this black line and really try not to go outside of it. There we go. This will define the front region for this particular piece. There we go. 
And then I just want to go in here and just adjust a couple of pieces which weren't quite right. And really, before I finalize it, I want to just put this, instead of half, I want to put it to full and make sure that this mask is looking okay. And just deselect that layer so I really can look at it. And you can see there's a little bit of problems happening along the edge. That's fine. This whole thing works fine around this edge. But there are a couple little little points where I want to bring that in a little. Let's bring that in. And then up here, this is definitely some not awesomeness. We might want to add another point here. So I'm just going to hold this down, add vertex tool, and I'm going to put one here. And I want to make sure that I'm doing it with the direction of the line. If I go against it, it may look right at first, but it's actually whipped around. So pull them out, the handles out, so you can see what direction the line is. And if you hold down the space bar while you're doing this, you can actually move the point. There we go. And let's just double check these guys. I know this one was a bit of a problem. Let's just press V, pull that guy down. And on top of all of that, once I've done it, I'm just going to back here. I can press F to feather that line. I'm just going to feather it by one. I don't want to feather it too much. I don't want this to look soft. I want it to look hard, nice hard edge. And we have a little bit of a problem along here. I'm seeing a little bit of brown coming through. Just pull that in a little bit. There we go. Great. Rather, I'd, in this particular situation, I'd be better off with less than more. Let's pull that in more. There we go. There, I think that looks great. So we have the front piece done. Now the next next thing to worry about will be the back piece. So let's close that. Uh, let's go to the back piece. Let's have a look. Now the only thing I want to do for the back piece is essentially I could just leave it the way it is because it's going to be behind the neck. The neck's going to sit inside of this. Hopefully we don't have to worry about it overlapping anywhere. Hopefully I can just leave this as is as just the full piece. I don't think there's any reason to really mask it off. Actually, we could mask off. Let's just draw a line. Uh, we want to grab the pen tool. I'm going to go around this, and I'm just going to mask off the back shoulder. I don't want to have overlapping uh, pixels that make a harder, a harder, less anti-aliased line here. If you look really close at this, there's anti-aliasing happening along this edge. If you were to duplicate this up, that anti-aliasing is reduced and becomes a lot harder. So the edge becomes quite pixelated in a way or can become overly sharp. So I'm going to just delete that. It's just nice to get rid of stuff so there's no extra pieces there. There we go. That's going to be the back comp. There's the front comp. So let's go into RR segmented. And what we should see is a front piece that is very clearly missing a back piece. Now, if I want to add that back piece, all I have to do is duplicate the layer. Pull down the Alt button. Select the layer I want to replace this layer with. Alt and drag and place. The back section is in there. But currently, it's on top. I want it to be underneath. And now, when we add the neck, we have a nice segmented piece. Oops. I'm going to do that. We have a nice we have two pieces that we can use to separate the neck from the actual front here. The next step will be to actually parent the let's let's actually rename these really quickly. So we're going to call this 3Q torso 01 front and this will be 3Q torso 01 back. And again, naming is very important. And I'm going to parent this back one to the front. So now whenever this front one rotates, the back goes with it. We don't really have to think about it after this. It's all taken care of for us. In the next video, what we'll do is take all of the pieces that we've put together for the segmented Rocket Randy and bring them into the other Rocket Randy composition and position everything properly and start working on the rest of the anchor points. If you like what ED Films is doing and want to stay up to date on the latest developments and tutorials, please show your support by liking us on Facebook.